Okay, my friends, we are in for an exciting time. I am going to explain exactly how light works and how energy transfers. This is red pulsed laser, exciting particles that are in the air, which all particles in the air can be excited when they're impacted. This is the particle in the light itself accelerating due to a venturi and I will show you in a second exactly what that light looks like but you can see that it is accelerating and it is the white is 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 moving away from the black and I'll show that in a second because light is a dipole it has a positive as a negative but the negative part is explosive the positive part is a carrier I'm going to explain it to you you can see fields surrounding the spinning polarized central dipole and that's why it has pulse 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 as it spins coming forward and this is Cheryankov radiation this is a particle nobody has any clue about apparently I believe that's antimatter and that is antimatter converting into matter I'm no clue at this point this I'm going to show you a better shot of this is the slowing down electron well it's a photon now this is what photons are like they're back-to-back -back electrons like I believe there's four of them in a box and as they come through space they get tipped off and they spin tipped and they spin and spin and spin and spin and that's what creates the different particles that we are we are actually looking at that's what they are right there now over here shows that light can can be accelerated you see the space between here and then it slows down you see the space right there and we can see that it's spinning to the right it means it drifts to the left now let's take a look at this all right these are exactly the same as the red only green is a more powerful laser and they only show up for a couple clicks here you know like two waves and then they're they settle down to like flat discs happens in red and green this is where it gets extremely interesting you saw these particles come and zip through there now what do you see here you see the little black spots you see them, black spots, and they're touching each other. They don't care about touching each other. They're, they're fine doing that. They get away from the white ones, which here I'm showing is red, but they, they're the exploding, concussing, because they're being forced through a venturi, which means that the region they control, which is way out here, and the, the, the actual particle, you can't even see it, but the region is huge, and they're crushed into each other, so this is the explosive, and the black parts just walk away, and then they come back in later. That is the most interesting of this because that shows me charge separation explosive white from the docile black carriers exploser exploders and just the ones that carry them you have to have a positive with a negative but they are only the same one electron volt until they concuss and then white can go to I don't know how high it can go depends on how hard it hits and how hard the thing it hits Okay, my friends, it's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, today with an absolutely wonderful time I am going to present to you. And by the time I'm done, it shouldn't take more than 10, 15 minutes, you'll be smarter than Einstein, Hawking, Hubble, Bohr, and all the rest of them, because they were all wrong about the atom and about the molecule and the electron and the whole nine yards. Now, when you're done today, you'll understand gravity, you'll understand dark matter, dark energy, how light travels from the sun to the earth, why the corona of the sun is millions of degrees and the surface is only 6,000, why the earth is only 80 or 90 degrees on the surface, and our magnetosphere, ionosphere, is thousands of degrees. You'll understand how gravity works. You'll understand how the n nucleus of atoms is 
truly constructed of tiny particles, which are electrons. Not protons and neutrons, because there are no protons and neutrons. There are just masses of electrons. It's called electron flood theory, and we will go over it in extreme detail. And it's only going to take a couple of minutes because it's extremely simple. It's just been totally misunderstood. So let's get started with why Hubble and Einstein and all the rest of them are wrong. And they know they're wrong now. It's not something that is... Well, as a matter of fact, I started this out here by um, right at the beginning where it says the new boson appears nuclear decay, breaks the standard model. And then it goes into... Uh, here they are at um, the Royal Institute. And she's saying... That this Phase and lepton universality okay. seems to be violated. Well... What that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. As we found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. All right, and, and, and there is no way because they don't understand it, and they still don't understand it, and because they think they're so smart, they're not even going to think that it's the, the tiniest particles are the reason they're, they're finding debris that they can't understand. Not that there's some other debris in there that they didn't understand. They just, they have seen all these little particles. They say, we see these tiny little particles, we know they're there, all these different positives and negatives and so forth. They're just dis different pieces of the same particles. And the same particles are electrons. Electron flood theory says the only list of particles there is is electrons. Case closed. Now, those are weak and strong dipoles. All right, here's an electron right here. It has a black spot and a powerful spot, a white spot. I'm showing it red. And that's sitting at rest. When it concusses, the white, which is the red down here, explodes and the black just doesn't do anything. It's like a carrier. Now, so those are electrons. Now, when you glue electrons together and you end up with protons, right here, back to back of, of, of electrons. The stable electron masses become atoms. So when you take a bunch of things and you put them together and then they sit there and they don't fall apart and they don't just decay, they're atoms and they're molecules. All right, and groups of molecules is matter. All right. Now, you just understand now the true nature of everything there is. And helium and hydrogen are so small and they have so few particles in a certain square mass that they are not magnetically pulled to Earth. And when I say magnetically pulled to Earth, you say, well, why would they be magnetically pulled to Earth? It's because everything that has electrons is sucked to the Earth because the Earth is a generator. I'm going to explain exactly how that works. It's extremely simple. And you have to understand that surrounding our solar system and everywhere in our solar system, it's like a soup of electrons. Well, what does that mean? That means that our Earth is spinning through with our electrons in the soup of electrons. We are a generator. We spin pushing against those particles. They push against us. That creates a magnetic field straight up through the north, uh, from the south to the north, and that is what creates gravity. It pulls anything with electrons to the Earth. If, you're, if you strictly have lightning or electricity that has only electrons, it goes to Earth and destructively because they have to incorporate with the electrons of the Earth and the material there. If it's a chunk of something and you drop it and it hits the Earth, it doesn't have to incorporate its electrons. It's not solid electrons. The more in the mass, the harder it hits the Earth, obviously. So gases and so forth don't do anything. Hydrogen goes up because it doesn't have enough particles in the same square inch. 
they go up in the air. And this is what they look like when you start putting them together and looking at what they look like. Positives and negatives, as I showed you, that's an electron at rest. Positive and negative. Now, when they sit together like this, the positives will go, they'll be forced towards the center because the negatives, which is the red ones, are the concussive explosive ones, they push each other away from each other. They will end up having a positive core because they don't mind being up against each other. They're just carriers. They're happy being each, each other. Then they will push away electrons into the lowest orbitals and then higher orbitals and they get more and more complex with more and more particles in the same size space. So it's the mass is the quantity of electrons per square inch at a set temperature at a set altitude, which is the compressed space. Now, excess electrons in that same space is heat. You're forcing the electrons into that space. It creates heat. That's all it is. You suck the electrons out, that's cold. When there's no extra electrons in there, that means it's literally frozen. And it's stability, because there's no extra electrons pushing anything around. Simple as that. Tesla had it exactly correct. Vibration is, is uh, everything. All right, now don't forget, this is what CERN is talking about. They're taking huge chunks of things and slamming them together in a super collider. And all of this debris is flying everywhere. And they're looking through and they're saying, oh, we're seeing some of these up quarks and down quarks and leptons and a positive charge and a negative charge. And they're seeing these little bits and pieces. And they see them on such a regular basis because they are the fundamental particles. Yes. Yes, absolutely. However, they're in addition, they're finding other particles that they can't account for because these are not different particles. Everything is made of electrons, as I have shown. And the electrons are the fundamental particles, and they're just working with so many of them that they can't figure it out. And they're thinking there's got to be some big other piece that they missed. No, there's just some other piece that is not decaying the way they had expected because it's just another bunch of little particles. That they're just missing the whole idea of it. It's just all the tiniest particles decaying in a matter of a bazillion different ways. And when you're down to the light where we are, they can only decay in a matter of one or two ways, and we can see them, and that's why what I have shown is the truth of the situation. Okay, we're going to be going into some, uh, a couple of different people. Anton is one fabulous researcher. Another guy is uh, has a plasma channel, fabulous stuff. It's going to be really exciting. But what, what, what really excited me was I just went back to when I started to try to investigate. You see this stuff here? This is this was deep work. This wasn't you know every you know just couple of days doing this. I This is all the heat and exchange work and all the molecular interaction, how it turns into energy and electric power and so forth from different um, chemistry. Now, this is, again, this is all chemistry and, uh, and, and uh, you know, electronics and, you know, the deep, deep, deep stuff. And a lot of it. Now, this was the pa paper I did. Of course, it's a mess now. But it gets into the exactly what I'm into now. It's just amazing. I get into the end here, and I'm trying to figure out what holds molecules together. What holds, what holds the core together? <laughs> I believe that it is evident that columbic forces are the nature of atomic and molecular behavior. And it's, it's this, this particle having a dipole nature to it. This is 50 years ago. It's amazing. Okay, we're going to be going through every different type of little gadget and device and 
like this guy's using water, literally water flowing through pipes to create electricity and make gases ignite and light up. And uh, all kinds of different tricky little things that they're using, you know, Tesla coils and all, how is this possible? And, you know, curious cases and uh, anti-gravity wheels. And we're going to be able to talk about all of these things and try to understand all of them because they all have to be understood using electron flood theory. And so far, I can't find anything that I don't understand. All right, so stay with me. We're going to be going through all of them one at a time. And if you have something you'd like to see explained, send me about it. Just talk to me about it. All right, I love you.